The investigation of the Air India Flight 171 plane crash turned up new evidence raising controversial questions. Did mysterious debris fall off the plane just as it was crashing? Did the pilots have the wing flaps incorrectly set prior to takeoff? Did the pilots incorrectly retract the wing flaps instead of the landing gear after takeoff? We will examine these issues and seek answers to these mysteries and get to the bottom of it. Before we do this analysis real quick, I just need to apologize for this error that I made in my video yesterday. So I want to correct that here for you. And anytime we make mistakes, you know, we'll go ahead and correct it in the next video. But yesterday I showed you that seating chart for the 787 and I showed you where the lone survivor passenger was sitting in 11A. The only problem is, is I had Googled a Boeing 787-8, which is what this plane was that crashed. But the seating chart I got was a 787-9. And so I'm going to show you the correct one now because this pertains directly to our discussion today. So again, I apologize for that and I hope you will forgive me. Now I know what you're thinking here, Jeff, man, you're Mr. Perfect, man. You've never been wrong. You're always right. You know, that's true. I've never been wrong. There was one time I thought I was wrong, but I was mistaken. So you can see this is where he was sitting and it's still the same seat. It's still 11A and it's still pretty much in the same uh, physical location. And if you look next to the circle there, you can see that's where the emergency door was that he likely escaped from. Okay, so the Daily Mail news media website ran this story here today and it says, oh, exclusive. So they're showing this video that everybody's seen and they're calling that exclusive. Okay, video shows object flying off Air India plane seconds before crash as expert hails miraculous escape of British survivor in seat 11A. So here in the video, they identified something that they said fell off of the plane just before it crashed down and impacted. And so I guess one of their experts that they were talking to said it was probably one of the emergency exit doors, which I think is preposterous. And so they pointed over here to seat 11A there, and there's your survivor. Now let's look at the part of the video again really close where the Daily Mail and other observers are saying they saw debris fly off the plane here just before it crashed into the ground. So we're going to stop it right here. So there's the plane pretty much getting ready to disappear below our view. And keep in mind, don't get fooled by that um, depth of field there. The plane is hundreds of yards past that tree right there. And it's also going 200 miles an hour approximately. But so just con concentrate on this area right here. And we're going to see what's happening with the part coming off of the plane. And, and this is why it doesn't even make sense to me. But you'll see what I'm talking about when you see the part. There it is right there. See it? See how it just popped right up there? Okay. So a plane that has already hundreds of yards past that point, all of a sudden you have something here that's moving upward which is already kind of goes against uh, physics here. So there's the part right there, see it? And it, as we step through it, you can see it's kind of, it's not really doing anything. It's sort of floating in air, which is why I think this is not anything that would have fallen off the airplane. And there's your explosion starting far off in the distance from this point. So what I think happened, I think the plane just, the wind of it coming real close to somebody's rooftop there, sucked something off a rooftop, like maybe an awning or a sheet of plywood or tar paper or something like that. Because this is not something that's dropping. Because remember, if the part had fallen off the plane, it only makes sense, folks. I mean, really, this is one of those duh moments here, people. <laughs> because if that part had fallen off of the plane and the plane's going down, then the part would be going down at the same rate that the plane is. It would be going down and hitting the ground. It wouldn't be going up from the ground. It would be going down to the ground. So that, I think, is why this has nothing to do with the airplane. And it has nothing to do with that lone survivor of the crash. And, and this is not the emergency exit door that some people are thinking that this is. They think that somehow this guy took the emergency exit door and threw it off the plane and he jumped out of the plane. That is simply not the case. And not only that, folks, it is physically impossible for any human alive, even me, as strong as I am, it is impossible 
to open an emergency exit door inside the plane because first of all the door is forced against the hull like this so as soon as that plane is pressurizing and it's going down the runway to take off it's putting pressure against that door and no human could pull that away and so even when the plane lands the only way to open that door is to pull it inward which you can't do until after the crash or after a safe landing and when you pull that door inward it goes like this and goes like that and then out so it's sort of a complex motion there it's not something that you can just take and throw it off the plane that was not the door to the plane so next we want to address this controversy here we've been getting a lot of comments thousands in both directions here since my video yesterday and so a lot of people out there about half the internet thinks that when this plane took off that the flaps on the back of the wings were set incorrectly it was a bad configuration. The other half of you out there think that it was set correctly. So who's right? And why is everybody looking at this differently, especially on shaky, grainy video where you can't really tell? So we're going to analyze this. So I want to show you what properly extended flaps look like before the plane takes off. And then I want to show you why it might have been impossible for them to take off in this airplane with bad flap settings on the back of those wings. So here is a Boeing 787-8 sitting at the gate and there's the rear flaps on the wing, right? So there you can see, and then there's the line there. That makes a gap when they extend out the flaps downward and uh, to create that curvature. So the reason why you have to extend those flaps for takeoff is to add curvature to the wing. It's called increasing the camber. And then what this does is you're actually increasing the surface area of the wing so that it will have lift. And then, so there's that line right there that you would see the gap one, once it starts to extend. Okay, now watch here as the captain starts to set the flaps. See how they went down a little bit there? And see, that's it. That's as far as they go. So they're moving right now. And that's probably a 15 degree setting. But you can see it's a subtle difference. It's not that obvious on the wing. And he's testing here uh, also the slats. But it's not that obvious looking at it, especially if this plane goes flying by you at 200 miles an hour, that, that you can tell whether these flaps are extended or not. So all of these people that are claiming that they see that the flaps are not extended, I still don't agree with that, folks. The video is not clear enough to tell because here sitting on the plane, you almost don't even really notice it. Now, as the plane taxis down the runway, pay close attention to these flaps because this is what is supposed to happen. This is what it should look like. So you can see how they are extended. And now we go nose up here. And as it lifts up, within five seconds of liftoff is when the landing gear should be up. So pretty much right by now, the landing gear should always be up. And it should go up before they do the flaps. So the flap should still be down because we're not at enough altitude yet and we're probably not going at enough speed yet in order for air to efficiently flow enough over the wings to give it lift. So you're going to see them close up that gap now and they will go ahead and retract the flaps. So just keep watching the action on those flaps right there. You can tell that it happens, you know, not immediately after liftoff either. Now, watch this. See, there it is. So now they're retracting the flaps. And you can see it's just such a subtle difference. It doesn't look that much different than it looked five seconds ago before he retracted the flaps. So for all of these people that are claiming that a plane flying by 200 miles an hour on an obscure, shaky video, that they can tell that the flaps were set properly or not, is just mind-boggling to me because I've also seen interviews with other Boeing pilots who've seen the video and said they can't tell if the flaps were set or not. Okay, now look here at both of the wings. In the middle of the wings, you see how you got like those black lines right there? That is that gap that I showed you that I think proves that the flaps are indeed set in the extended position here because remember, it's very subtle on these wings. It's not like it's going to be hanging down, flapping like a door. They just stick down just a little bit. And at this distance, you're not going to really be able to see that 15 degree flap angle. And even here on this Boeing 787-8 taking off, look at the flaps after it takes off. You have a hard time even seeing where they are there. Look, see, they're right there, but you have a hard time seeing that they're extended or retracted. You just really can't tell at this point. 
And this is a crystal clear video shot from across the runway on the airport. Okay, now let's address this very critical point here of could the pilots have taken off in that plane with a, an invalid flaps configuration setting? And I think the answer is no, because look, this is what happens if you try to take off and you hit those thrusters there and you're going to take off with the flaps not extended. Now, what you were about to see is in a Boeing 737. Configuration warning in the Boeing 737. And that'll go off for four main reasons. If the flaps aren't set for the one, the 25 degrees, the parking brake is on, or the aircraft is out of trim, and lastly, if the spoilers are extended. So you heard how loud that alarm was. So I don't think that there's any way that any pair of qualified pilots could ever take off on a plane like that without the flaps set properly. Now, a huge number of you commented on my video yesterday that you think that, okay, let's assume that the plane had the flaps set correctly when it took off. But five seconds after takeoff, when you're supposed to retract the landing gear, let's say the co-pilot made a mistake and instead of retracting the landing gear, he instead pulled the flaps lever, which would retract the flaps. And now you're reducing the area of your wing now and you're going to lose lift because of it. And that would explain that scenario as well. What do you think about that? Well, here's something that I think that it's not likely they would mistake that and here's why. When you look at the cockpit here of the Boeing 787, this right here is the flaps control. And so it has a much different feel and shape and location compared to the landing gear control, which is right over here. And I'll show you a better close-up shot of this in a minute. But they're two different functions. So this one here, you, you kind of grab it with your fingers and it just has a tactile clicking at these different locations here. So you would know, it's very obvious, so you would go up, up to like, say, 15 degrees here on it and you'd hear those clicks. But the landing gear is completely different. It's very definite. You have to pull on it, and it's got that round shape similar to a wheel. So you can see these are two differently shaped control handles, and you have to operate them differently, and it just seems so unlikely that you would get the two confused. And they're not even right next to each other where you would grab one by mistake either. So yes, I think it is possible that the co-pilot might have screwed up after they took off, but I still, I don't know, I'm, I'm just thinking that two knowledgeable pilots like this, it's, it's just so unlikely for that to happen. I think maybe there was some type of a hydraulic problem or something like that right after they took off. Like, supposing they did set the flaps correctly, but what if the hydraulic system failed to respond? Maybe that could be the problem, right? So then when they go to retract the landing gear, he operated it correctly with the right lever. But hey, wait a minute, it's not retracting. Something's wrong here. So I think they may focus in on that as well. And that smoke you see there is not smoke. It's dust kicked up at the end of the runway from the plane. And make sure to keep those questions coming because this is a great engineering discussion. This is a mystery that really needs to be solved, folks. And if you didn't see my video from yesterday here on the Air India crash, check it out right up here. And make sure you also check out my other video that I did on the Boca Raton airplane crash right here. And it was special to me personally because it happened local to me. I was able to go to the scene and shoot video there. So thank you so much for joining us and we'll see all of you on the next one.